All right, guys, brand new Diablo 4 patch notes came out for season four, and here's what you want to know. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over this relatively fast because there's so much info. There's definitely huge massive buffs and there's huge massive nerfs depending on the build that you want to play. So we're starting right off, when does season four's PTR come out? It's actually coming out very soon in just about a week over here on April 2nd through 9th. That's how we have access to the PTR. This is a PC only thing, but that's how we get to get early access to season four. So what are the biggest changes over here? So we're getting a massive rework on the itemization. Basically, rare items are going to be useless in the game as far as end game goes. There's a lot of small changes like basically only ancestral items in World Tier 4. There's tons of different changes here. We can actually trade legendary as well as unique items, which is actually one of my favorite things. There's also going to be a few new affixes added into the game, and a bunch of them are going to be removed. So, some of the newer affixes to look forward to are going to be resource per second, resource on kill. These are massive, and for the sorcerers specifically, the chance to get that vulnerability, so you don't have to use that uh, Frost Nova. We also have life per hit, which can actually be pretty insane for builds like Flurry, which already can grant you life on hit. And then also basic skill ranks, which could be very good for maybe some sort of Claw Druid, especially if you uh, happen to mix in with the Pain Gorgers. Maybe even Arclash can make great use out of it, but this is going to be pretty big. So basic skills might be an endgame viable option for more than just uh, Arclash. So as far as it goes, that's like one of the major changes in terms of new affixes that they did show off in the patch notes here over here. On top of that, uh, legendary items drop from enemies level 95 are always going to be 925 item power. So basically, you're not forced to doing specifically dungeons. You could do hell tides, and there's going to be a new hell tide in the patch. So, sun run off, there are also changing gems here. They didn't show off all of them, but you can get uh, basically core stats now, which is probably going to be the most sought after thing, as that is going to be a multiplier, and there are other builds like Estador's Overflowing Cameo, and other things that do scale off of your core stats. In, uh, in terms of salvaging, you're going to get uh, significantly reduced drop rates, and there's less time sorting over here. But a lot of these are going to be kind of removed out of the game. You're, like, you're not going to require certain uh, things in the game to craft certain things, uh, which is going to be good. There's going to be an item uh, cap as far as the gold cost on rerolling items. And then, again, they're going to remove uh, material removal, and they're doing some consolidation for it. And then Forgotten Souls can now be obtained from Whispers and are now a global rare drop from elites. Think of it like Death's Breath if you played Diablo 3. So overall, pretty awesome changes over here. And then all uniques can now drop in World Tier 3, but they're still going to be sacred, so it doesn't really matter. But this is one of the things I think I'm excited about, but it's still pretty rare to get these, but Uber Uniques can start dropping from monsters level 55. So that is huge, and that will drop at 925. So as long as the monster is level 55, you could get an Uber Unique which is going to be very interesting to see if people are going to start trying to farm like lower forms of content because it can drop. Now, we don't know the official drop rate. However, I do know that there is a drop rate of the other smaller tier bosses like the Varshan and other bosses that would lead up to Daryl. That has a 0.5% chance to drop an uber unique as well. So that's a newer change. One of the newest changes here is that we are going to be able to temper items. So they show off a few screenshots here. Basically, what you need to understand is that you can temper items and add two more affixes to items. So rare items will drop with uh, two and legendary will drop with three, but then you can craft two more stats on the item. They didn't reveal every single one of the uh, rolls on them, but there's going to be multiple other things that you can get. There's also something that you can get to have what's called master working, which essentially instead of going to five out of five on the item, you can start going even higher in terms of like one random roll on the item will go up every four ranks and they'll probably show it off over here so you can master work an item and then also make it so it's even stronger it's rng and what gets upgraded on the fourth one but basically you can get stats that are far beyond what you used to be able to get which is massive over here uh that is part of their uh i guess newer change that i guess they don't even show off the screenshot that's kind of strange but basically think of whatever like you know vulnerable damage whatever would roll on the item right these numbers can randomly roll every four tiers because you keep on putting points into it it can re-roll to way higher than it used to be so we're objectively going to be stronger in every single class that uh, you play because again every four and it can go up to 12 uh it's going to go and become stronger it's going to upgrade all of them but then one random one every four will go up like 
astronomically high in terms of like the the ranges on the rolls on it and then on top of that this is one of the nicer changes so you don't have to keep all of your aspects you can just go ahead and get rid of them and just salvage them basically and then you're going to get that brand new aspect it's going to upgrade so once you learn it at the highest tier you will have it at the highest tier which is awesome now just as a heads up though this is going to be seasonal so as in like your season characters when you make a new one you're going to have to re-level up all the aspect and the higher aspects will drop the higher world tier so Overall, this is a great change. We have the new Helltide. The new Helltide has these threat meters. And so you'll see up in the top right, you just kill a bunch of monsters. The meter is going to build up and then it's going to go ahead and expend. And while it's expending, there's going to be a bunch of things that come out. There's actually a newer boss called the Blood Maiden that is going to be coming out as well. There's like more activities you can see over here. You can see all the decapitated people. It looks pretty cool. But there is going to be some adjustments to Helltide and you can actually access it earlier on. So that's really cool and there's no roaming bosses or ambient meters. So I guess that kind of helps if you want to go in your inventory and change something, then you don't want a meter to just slam and kill you in hardcore. So the biggest newer change over here is the pit. This is going to be kind of a newer form of end game content as it'll give you material for the newer uh, form of Andario, another uber boss that you can defeat to get more uber uniques. So you're going to have to uh, enter world tier four. There's a quest at tier 46 nightmare dungeon and then you get these rune shards so these rune shards are basically like a greater riff you're gonna have to kill the monsters we do not a little bit more information on this now so you get a 10 minute timer over here and then each player's death removes time from the clock so you don't want to play with people that suck in this and are constantly dying because if you don't complete it with some extra time you're not going to get those additional tiers uh, of how high you can go in let's say the greater riff i'm going to use that as an example because a lot of people but have played Diablo 3. Basically, if you want to think of it, you go in, you kill monsters, and if you can kill enough monsters within the time limit, there's going to be a boss that spawns in, and then you kill the boss. And depending on how much time you have left, you're going to get additional tier unlocks. So there's going to be hundreds of difficulty tiers. So, um, I mean, with hundreds of difficulty tiers, that's going to be crazy. Now we have a form of scalable endgame content, again, similar to Diablo 3, where it's, it seems like it's going to be like, kind of like greater rifts. But if you do finish, uh, you will still receive loot, but you don't get any of the master working materials, and you want that. That's where you get to, again, every four tiers, you get that, like, massive boost in the stats. Now, on top of that, the boss ladder updates over here, so Dario's going to be a newer boss that we can defeat, and she has the same uber-unique drop rate as Dario, but you can scale it to go even higher. I don't know if they actually show it off over here, but this is something that uh, the NDA has lifted uh, from a Diablo partner. Basically... I don't know what the set drop rate is, but when we talked about it now, I can tell you guys, you can get like 10 or 15x the drop chance of whatever is in here. So if the uber unique drop rate, we haven't had anything officially stated, but it'd be like one to 2%. So if you're doing this as a 10 or 15, I mean, we're looking at maybe like a 10 to 30% ish drop rate chance of an uber unique every single time you're doing like the huge end game content. Now, I don't know how hard these are going to be, but if I can get like a 30% chance to get an uber unique, I feel like it's relatively easy for most people uh, to eventually kit their character out fully without feeling like it's a huge drag to do this. But how hard this is going to be, I don't know. And how hard is it going to be to acquire the materials to do the 10 or 15x drop pool of let's say one to 2%, whatever the case may be. I'm excited about doing this. But uh, the summoning parts can be acquired from uh, the Beast and Ice and Lord Zier, uh, apparently for this form of endgame content. And then they're all 925s, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then defeating your first Tormented Echo guarantees a Resplendent Spark. That means that you can actually get one out of the four, because they change it to four, uh, uh, in terms of crafting an Uber Yink. So that's like the massive change for all of the uh, different, you know, characters and classes that you plan to play. Now, there is another huge amount of notes. I want to go over this really briefly here, but some of these are pretty massive in terms of like the buffs and the nerfs for certain classes. I'm just going to go over a uh, real skimmed version of this. However, I will cover a more in-depth version of every single class with the buffs and the nerfs. So this is coming out again April 2nd. So this is the biggest thing. So we do have have uh, a new uh, armor here, and this is Tyriel's Might. So, uh, wait, this is what I want to show off. This is uh, over here. This is the new Uber Unique, and how it works is while at full life, our skills will unleash the Artillery Barrage. So, this is going to be pretty massive for builds that can play with some sort of a barrier. I'm kind of looking at certain things like the Sorceress to be very strong with the new Tyriel's Might if this actually does insane amounts of damage, and it's got pretty good stats. You got plus max to all res, you have uh, that resistance to all elements. This could be pretty big for certain uh, builds. Again, if you can upkeep 
100% uptime on your artillery barrage, that can be pretty good. And this is whenever your skills, not um, uh, when you self-cast. So what this could mean is if you spawn other things, they could activate that barrage. So this would be maybe something to consider if you are looking to min-max, but again, it's uber unique. So some people will find that to be a little bit disheartening because it's going to be quite rare, right? Unless you just craft it. And then on top of that, there's going to be some new boots. Uh, casting a skill has a 20 to 30% chance to cast a non-mobility, non-ultimate skill that is currently on cooldown. Uh, this could be pretty interesting to see where this goes considering it has a 12 second cooldown internally on it, but it is in the boots category. Uh, however, with Sorceress, you probably want like SUs and there's certain builds where you're just using the boots to get like triple res on it and then you get extra movement speed is pretty much what you're running. But other builds may require like, let's say Beast Wall boots for the Rogue. I think that this thing could be very interesting to see. Um, the problem is it's just a chance chance to cast whatever skill that is currently on cooldown. So what that means is you could just run a build that only has one thing with a cooldown and then you're going to guarantee get that sort of thing. And if let's say it lasts for a certain amount of duration, uh, the, the proc rate is actually pretty high. So I would say you can maybe upkeep one certain like buff up uh, for quite some time depending on your build. So I think this is a cool item though definitely viable as a unique. And then next up, we have the new legendary aspect, Frosty Strides. So while below 40 to 60% uh, life, Evade freezes close enemies for cold damage and applies vulnerable to him. So maybe for the Sorceress too, um, over there. And then we have Aspect of Concussive Strike. So lucky hit damaging an enemy has a 20% chance to uh, daze them for two seconds and you deal increased damage to daze enemies. Maybe this could replace Manglers for the rope. And then for Barbarian, we get some unique pants. It's going to be for a brand new build. So Ancients you summon are empowered. There's like a huge massive update to the summons in this season. So Korlek is going to have an earthquake that deals some damage and then Talek, these dust devils. And if these scale with your dust devils, well, this could be quite good as I'm pretty sure how it should work is all of our stats are going to be 100% thrown into these summons. The only thing that's not mentioned in this patch notes is that rogue summons aren't going to be getting the bonus, but every other class got it. I'm hoping the shadow clone for whatever reason will now count as a minion that also uh, gets 100% of our stats. Because if it does, Rogue actually has a lot of potential with Shadow's Grasp. Anyways, next up, uh, Madwalk uh, gains some sort of Ignite and he gets to do some extra damage over here when he uses uh, Upheaval. There's also some unique gloves. The, so these are going to be for double swings. So double swing uh, after casting it four times, our next double swing will hit two additional times, each dealing some more damage. And then we have Aspect of Fierce Winds. So our shout skills create five Duffs Devils that deal damage to enemies along their path. And then on top of that, they get to be bigger and deal increased damage for their size uh, increase. And then for Druid, we get a new ring called the Earthbreaker. So Landslide causes the ground to erupt with some spikes that continuously deal some sort of damage. And then Landslide in this area has a chance to cause additional Landslide pillars within. And then there's some unique boots for the Druid called the Wild Heart Hunger. When you shapeshift into a werewolf or werebear, you gain Wild Heart for five seconds. Wild Heart grants you one to 1.5 increased damage with shapeshifting skills every two seconds, and that stacks up to 20 times. And then we have the fevered, uh, fevered Mauling. When you hit an enemy with at least one Maul, it increases its attack speed by 1 to 2%, and you gain some damage reduction for 5 seconds, and that can stack up to 5 times. For Necromancer, we have Ebon Piercer, which is a unique amulet where Blight shoots 4 smaller projectiles that pierce enemies and deal shadow damage over 3 seconds. So maybe good for clearing out stuff or just applying some sort of shadow dot to multiple targets. And then we have Cures Embrace, which are a brand new player of unique gloves, which makes so Blood Surge uh, consumes corpses to have mini Novas dealing damage and uh, damage is increased per target drained by the initial cast up to 50% and damage is also increased by 20% for each corpse consumed. So you can get some massive damage. However, with this, uh, Ring the Sacrilegious Soul is pretty much on every single Necromancer build, so that consuming corpses will be less damage. But at the end of the day, uh, if you want to play any Necromancer build, you got to have that ring. That ring is like literally too good not to play. And then we have a aphotic aspect, which makes a skeletal priest empower your skeletal warriors, attacks to deal shadow damage, and have a 5 to 15% chance to stun enemies for 1.5 seconds. The rogue, there's a new unique ring, rapid fire, now lobs, exploding arrows that deal some increased damage. And then with the saboteur's ring over here, uh, which is a unique ring, casting flurry has a chance to release stun grains that deal physical damage and stun enemies for a second. And then our grenade skills has a 5% lucky hit chance. This is actually pretty big considering a lot of these proc chances of certain things do not have lucky hit, so you can't activate a proc off of a proc. But now, uh, that can be pretty big. And then we have aspect of high velocity, so barrage can now pierce an enemy and barrage has increased attack speed. This might be one of the best builds as 
far as I was aware of, Barrage is still the S tier build for the Gauntlet to push, and this could be potentially one of the best builds in the game for the Rogue. Even though we're getting some buffs with the stun grenades, you still have to like expend some resource with some sort of a skill to get your stun grenades to activate in the first place. Next up, we have Fractured Winter Glass. I actually already have a picture of this over here. Um, so this is what the new unique for the Sorceress is going to do. It's going to make it so when you cast Frozen Orb, there's a 50% chance to spawn a Conjuration when it explodes. And our Conjurations have up to a 100% chance to launch a Frozen Orb at a nearby enemies. Now, just as a heads up, any Conjuration skill in the game, which was basically all of the things to add with the summon tag here, um, they're lucky it chances so low. We're talking 3%, we're talking 15%, and 5%. So this is a very, very low chance for it to activate, even though you think 100%. It's 100% of 15. So basically, if you get on the highest end, well, it's like a 15 or 3%, whatever. It's still pretty low proc chance, but you can get additional Frozen Orb, which is quite good. There's actually another change. I don't know if it's in the patch notes, but I do know it exists. Controller with Frozen Orb is going to be massive. Frozen Orb will auto-target the enemy and explode perfectly on the enemy, which means if you have the double explosion, you're going to get massive, massive amounts of damage, and I think Frozen Orb might be one of the best skills in the game going forward. We'll talk more about it when I do my uh, update for every single character in the balance update that I want to go over. And then there's a newer pair of unique gloves. Casting Firebolt through your Firewall causes it to split into four bolts, each doing some more damage, but it's a double cast, and if you've played Pain Gorger, I mean, the build is still slow. I don't know if this is going to matter too much. And then we have the legendary aspect, the uh, Tenacious Destruction. You get to deal increased damage while you have no defensive skills on your action bar. If this is offensive and you put in a two-hander, that is 80% increased damage. That is massive multiplicative damage. Probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen. However, that means no teleport. I can play without my fire and... Um, uh, cold shield ice armor, but playing without teleport and sorceress. Yeah, that's not gonna be fun I wish it just said no like shield defensive skills because that means no frost nova either So that's a huge thing that you are giving up, but I mean yeah, ADX damage is crazy, man. Uh, that is several aspects, but flamethrowers over here incinerate uh, splits into three beams that deal less damage now if you can shock on this and get triple beams like if you're just point blank and it hits three beams now, I actually see Incinerate being good if you can shotgun it, basically. If you can't, then Incinerate is still bad because no one wants to hold still. It's still a very underwhelming skill. In fact, they gave it a massive amount of buffs in the previous update, and they're even giving it more buffs. So as far as this balance update goes, guys, I'm going to kind of reserve this for a separate video so this video isn't half an hour long, and most people only really want to see their specific class. So I'm going to go over, like, the general ones here uh, instead of every single class uh, in depth. So Banished Lord's Talisman got massively nerfed over here, so the resources need to get to overpower got reduced by 25 but they're reducing the overpower damage by half so they cut that off massively which is a huge nerf to barbarian and then on top of that uh to bolts over here uh the damage increase persists for one second longer after being unstoppable so it could be what five seconds instead of four but you get half the damage this is still probably one of the best pair of pants in the entire game so it's still going to be s tier absolutely still one of the best uniques in the entire game and then uh disobedience over here they don't fall off independently so they refresh so as long as you're not in a situation where you're gonna like drop it off it could be a little bit better but i still think everyone's just gonna play juggernaut because it's up 100 of the time so i i feel like this is uh it doesn't matter unless it, it refreshes on entering a brand new area or something i still think people will just prefer juggernaut assimilation over here got changed so you used to have some sort of dodge chance and you gain a resource instead of getting the resource you now fortify so this could be pretty good if you want to consider running this on the rogue and then of Retribution, you get to increase damage to stun and knock down enemies, and you get increased uh, chance to stun and got increased. And then Inner Calm uh, now is going to just give you flat increased damage, and then you get to triple the bonus after holding still for three seconds. It was kind of used in a lot of builds that would do one-shot stuff, and you could still do it, it doesn't really matter. And then uh, Crowded Sage used to give you, uh, you get to heal just life per second. It used to actually be really good earlier stages, and the end game is well worthless. So later, uh, this is actually potentially pretty OP, and they might actually have to nerf it. So it makes it so you have increased dodge chance and successful dodges restore up to 20% of your max life and you, if you get like 30% dodge on rogue you have a 30% chance to just restore 20% of your life that is actually looking pretty good and so dodge on certain stats keep in mind dodge is inverse multiplicative which means that the more you stack the harder it is to get that next percent upgrade uh bold chieftains can now be used by barbarians and druids so that's really cool this could be actually big for necromancer and thorns minions because if something swipes and hits multiple thorns minions the fact that needle floor can proc 
all across all of them. And now minions receive 100%. Necromancer, Barb, Druid, and Sword Companion. So Rogue got short and a stick here. They all receive 100% of the player's attribute. That means the crit chance, the increased damage. This is huge. Uh, massive, massive amount of damage. And there's uh, new uh, tag changes for Shout applies to Druid and Barbs. And then mobility skills... Uh, that move a player uh, got kind of grouped up into one. Core skills and master skills are now grouped up. Same thing with like bone spirit. So this could be pretty good, but we're gonna have to see in game what this means because I'm gonna have to exactly see which skills count. It says other skills like bone spirit. Is that if the, if this is pretty wide, this could be pretty big uh, because uh, again, core skills is the main thing that would give you like let's say like if you're running Asus Ferocity to get 100% crit on source. That is pretty massive. And then the uh, uh, various aspects have been updated to account for these changes. So yeah, lots of stuff. Now there are massive nerfs over here. And like I said, I'm gonna breeze through these cause I wanna make a video for every single class. So this video is not one hour long, but I'm gonna skim this so you guys get the idea of the massive buffs and nerfs. Barbarian took like crazy nerfs guys. All right, but we kind of expected it. Let's be honest here. Uh, Barbarian, so they just take 10% more damage now. So they just remove it. And then uh, legendary powers that require called the ancients don't have to, uh, no longer ha I have to be equipped, so you get the bonuses. This doesn't really matter too much, though, because you're still going to have to, like, activate it anyways. Uh, with If you want to play the newer build, that is. Charge got its damage reduced over here, and, and there's a lot more here. Uh, so power charge, the cooldown reduction. So a lot of these, I'm just going to mention, uh, so this video isn't super long, massive nerfs to, like, basically a lot of the stuff with Barbarian. Uh, Hammer of the Ancients is destroyed, like, and I mean destroyed. Um, you guys want to see how much damage this is. Uh, change, this is another fellow Diablo partner, Rob, and he calculated it, the multiplier lost over here, comparing the Barb and... I'm going to tell you guys, Sorcerers is probably one of the best classes. In fact, back when we were doing speed runs, we'll talk more about this in a second, but here's like the old damage multiplier. We get like 400%. The new multiplier is 44. So what that is in terms of a loss is it's a 90% damage reduction. So Barb's just straight up lost 90% of damage. Now, you do get other buffs for other builds. It's not like Barb is worthless, guys. Now, if you're playing Hoda, does that make it worthless? Honestly, it does so much damage, it might not matter, but it, it's still, at the end of the day, losing 90% of your damage is, it's gonna matter, right? Now, will you be still one-shotting bosses? You know, I'm gonna be honest, most people could probably figure it out anyways, and like myself, when we did the one-shot rogue build with the Baltz bug back in season two, that got nerfed. I, I still made a new one-shot build, so sometimes it's all about just kind of tweaking certain pieces of gear, and you can still one-shot things. So... Don't think that it's going to be absolutely worthless. And then, like, Charge got absolutely, like, obliterated, too. And we'll talk more about that when I go over, like, the very specific one. So, basically, Barb with minions is getting buffed. So, there's going to be some sort of, like, summon Barb build. They've also massively buffed a lot of different things that people weren't using. But the thing that uh, actually got changed the most is, like, these... Uh, little dust devils there's a lot of things with dust devils that got increased like i said i'm going to kind of summarize this basically dust devils up barb took nerfs in like almost every single department <laughs> and then as far as druid goes again there's going to be some sort of summon druid build that will kind of emerge and and again pets are going to be a lot better at the, end of the day last rate got increased i'm not sure if people will actually want to uh, try that out but that is something that uh, might be actually quite good for that as a newer sort of a uh, build for that and then blurred beast they got a small buff but like they 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 absolutely gutted that the last season and the small buff is not nearly as good uh that's basically what i want to note with the druid as far as necromancer goes you might be able to play a thorns minion build in fact minions actually might be one of the strongest builds in the entire game uh if you can get it up especially if ring of the metal stays the way it does to get even more increased damage i mean you could probably one shot everything in the entire game because ring of the metal gave you crazy amounts of damage and now minions gain 100 stats so again that is going from 10% to 100% was what it used to give you. So you used to get 10% of your stats would transfer the minions. Now it is 100%. Like that is crazy levels. And then they changed a bunch of things. And there's another thing for, there's a three second cooldown. Here it is. This is, this is the one I want to talk about. This is the one that needs to be noted here. This is like our blanket video. The Reaper's upgrade, the wide numbers attack reduce one of your active cooldowns by three seconds. So what this means, you throw on that ulti. It doesn't say non-ultimate. That is very important. So uh, basically you got to have hundred percent uptime of your ulti and you will just shred all the content with hundred percent. Now keep in mind, this is PTR theme can probably be nerfed. I'm noting this one will probably be nerfed. Uh, I'm calling it right now so there's a massive amount of change to like all the minions they're all getting pretty much buffs uh, in most uh, areas there's also some sort of new blood surge build with a brand new unique that could be maybe considered uh, there's also shadow blight those are the kind of things to look out for um for that 
far as rogue goes, what's one of the newer things that you can do with the rogue? Stun grenades. All the stun grenades things that like are active in the game will now give you a multiplier on stun grenades. So if it says like you have a chance to uh, spawn stun grenades after let's say 100 energy, which is one of the things that can roll, uh, it will now give you like an X of some sort of number on stun grenades. So stun grenades may be the new rogue build. There's also a few chains like Flurry got a nice little buff over here, but overall you compare this to Twisting Blades. Twisting Blades actually did get a small buff. I was hosting, hoping uh, Close Quarters would give you uh, like a massive buff because they absolutely destroyed it in Season 3 and it's still kind of med. Uh, but uh, when you compare it to Season 2, that is. Now, Inner Sight over here actually got kind of changed because no one played it. Originally, it was what everyone played. Then it got nerfed to the ground uh, because it has, like, an internal cooldown. And you don't really worry too much about resources because to Baltz is in, like, most builds anyways. So, they buffed uh, Lerana's Instinct, which was the node, which would give you, like, 100% dodge chance. So, now it gives you 100% dodge chance for two seconds. And then our core skills deal damage equal to our core skill damage bonus while Inner Sight uh, gauge remains full. So, maybe some people will try it out, but... Doesn't matter that much. I think people will still probably do combo points. That's been one of the most popular builds for a long time. There's also a buff, surprisingly, to Twisting Blades. And it was still pretty good, but I mean, at the end of the day, what's the buff? I mean, at the higher end, it's like a 5%. So cool, but at the end of the day, again, it's so small. A lot of stuff with, again, stun grenades, stun, stun grenades, a lot of stuff. That's probably going to be one of the newer builds that you could consider running if you want to go ahead and go for it. Um, there are some bug fixes like the Shadow Imbue was apparently giving you extra crit with one of the points and it's like not going to give it to you anymore. Again, I don't want to go over everything in depth over here, but uh, Frozen Orb, I already mentioned that change. Frozen Orb is getting basically a buff. They're increasing the damage by 20% over here. This is what makes it actually really, really powerful and the one that pops twice. Again, you probably want to use controller with the brand new season if you are playing Frozen Orb. There's a few changes to enhance Ice Armor. This is one of the things that like I constantly got asked when I was when I was pushing the leaderboards. Where's my like leaderboards? So this was in season two. I had a lot of places uh, on the leaderboards for speed runs on the website. They were all verified runs at the time. Uh, and then I had a lot of places, uh, placements. And what I was playing was uh, Ice Armor. This is actually pretty good. And this is what I want to briefly talk about. If you are interested in playing Sorceress, Ice Armor is money. So uh, you're going to be able to get more mana regen, which is pretty good. And then instead of shimmering, uh, making it so enemies that you hit will have a chance to become frozen, this is what I like. While Ice Armor is active, you reduce its cooldown by two seconds for every 50 mana that you spend. So the more mana you spend, obviously you're going to be able to then uh, get reduced cooldown on it. And then on top of that, since you have increased mana regen, um, as long as that this is like an X multiplier over here, you just run to Balt and you just kind of spam teleport, just get more and more resource, which is going to be great. Um, you can even throw in uh, what is that, the, uh, Umbral, and then you can get even more, uh, resources over there, because you can start freezing everything, especially with Frozen Orb, it's gonna be pretty dang good, and then, yeah, you're gonna be able to keep up Ice Armor, and why is that good? Well, the brand new, unique, uh, uber unique that I wanna mess around with is Tyrael's, and while we are at full life, which is pretty easy to get on Sorcerers, because you're just gonna have that barrier up most of the time with the new shimmering armor and you're just going to keep up and you'll be basically unkillable with the exception of maybe just getting absolutely one shot because we don't know how hard the brand new uber you know undariel is going to be but nonetheless that's why i'm excited about it. this one over here you can pre-react the chill enemies but you're going to get the shimmering armor not the other one because this is way better anyways uh they changed some frost nova stuff but that's the thing that i'm most excited about they did buff uh, also uh hydra is getting a nice uh baseline maximum amount so you get double and keep in mind the brand new build is supposed to be for frozen orb which then gives you your conjuration skills which is a hydra and then you can get more procs off of it and then lightning spear over here got changed as uh, incinerate got buffed even more uh, it's probably not going to matter again unless you can do the shotgun thing uh, which is kind of cool there's a massive amount of buffs to sorceress i mean the two three four percents here and these start stacking up like five times you get like a five percent dps increase but again you get it in multiple areas and then you know frozen orbit there's a lot of other things that are going to be uh really good for frozen orb so i think that that's where they want us to make some builds over here so some other small changes but uh that's really what i wanted to go over there is a new set of elixirs they kind of deleted a lot of the other elixirs and kind of just grouped them up into like stage one and two so it's the same effect but now there's just two stages instead of other stages that they added previously um there are two new elixirs so you got holy bolts which i believe is supposed to be similar to artillery and then there is momentum and this is the one that actually matters and so that's why i'm going to go over it so after killing an enemy you get to increase your movement speed by a set amount and it stacks up at 15 times which means it's pretty much the only elixir that most people will be running for the gauntlet so this is the best one 
The rest of them, I mean, yeah, sure, getting attack speed, crit strike damage if you need it, but the gauntlet isn't really that hard in terms of like monster HP. It's just movement speed that you need. So these are going to be the new dungeons here that they're adding into the... Um, uh, pool for World Tier 4 and 3. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I think most people are interested in just doing the brand new pit anyways for end game content, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys right there real quick. It's a bunch of bug fixes, but that's what I want to go over in this video, and I'm probably going to reserve the uh, buffs and nerfs per character because I want to go over those in depth as that does matter. So, who are the biggest winners and who are the biggest losers? Barbarian 100% is the biggest loser here in terms of the patch notes, and I would say Sorceress is probably one of the bigger uh, winners, but across the board, all the summons are massive buffed and that's going to be quite good as far as i'm aware of i think that the sorcerer should be considered these should be well they have the, the word summon in the tag and they mention it but there's no other summons that you would have on the sorcerer so that them putting it in the patch notes because it doesn't have like minion in the tag it just says conjuration whereas if you go to like necromancer over here and you go over some of the uh, other like tags that would say well, this one over here says uh, well it's this one's core and darkness but this one i believe it still counts as a minion because the specter charges for it so i'm pretty sure that those should count as minions and again if they get 100 of our stats conjuration builds are going to be crazy especially with the frozen or one that can just spawn them in it's going to be awesome but anyways that's the patch notes i'm pretty excited let me know guys what you think of it down below i know there was so much content here but if you guys enjoyed the video drop a like on it if you do here hit subscribe to the bell if you want to see the gameplay very soon i'll be dropping a build guide of the brand new sorcerer's build now that we know everything that's coming on the game i'm very excited for season four but i'll be uploading individual videos that goes over all like the buffs and nerfs because again this video is already pretty dang long but take care guys i'll see you in the next one peace out